Hi there, I'm Mel Shank, an author and architect in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Vietnamese modernist architecture of the mid 20th century is disappearing rapidly in the 21st century. This video provides the context and details of the opportunities for those with vision and money to adapt these heritage structures for new uses or to conserve them. This episode is the last half of a presentation given online on 27 January 2022 to the design studio of Professor Eric LaRue in the Department of Architecture of the National University of Singapore. Let's consider the potential for the continuing life of mid-century modernist buildings in Vietnam. We've lost so many of them over the past 25 years. Many of the historical modernist shop houses around Southern Vietnam are in need of repair and restoration. I was told a few months ago that this particular property in Ho Chi Minh City had seriously deteriorated. But when I went there this week to check on it, I found that the house was still occupied and in fairly good condition. Nevertheless, any property on valuable land like this one can be sold for redevelopment tomorrow. No shop house in the city, no matter how historical, is currently protected by decree of the government and is entirely at the whims of the land rights owners and developers. But in general, shop houses are usually very adaptable to new uses and renovation. Shop houses around the city are constantly being repaired renovated or added to, and this construction sector is one of the most important segments of the economy because it is proven to be largely resistant to economic recessions. I saw a continuous new construction and renovation of existing structures in the Vietnamese neighborhoods throughout the major property recession here from 2011 through 2013, as well as during the last two pandemic years. The ground floor of shop houses is configured from the beginning to be rented out or used for commercial uses, allowing the tenant to customize the frontage for its own identity separate from the house above. There's been a lot of recent turnover of shop spaces over the past few years. So there is constant renovation of shop houses underway. Mid-century commercial buildings like this one from 1954 are usually very accommodating to new uses within. And this building has seen many different tenants and uses, including the Lincoln Library of the US Information Service during the American War years. The Americans installed one of the first air conditioning systems in Vietnam in their portion of this building to accommodate this use. This set of photographs illustrates a then and now situation, contrasting Leyte Rang Street in 1972 with its condition a few years ago when I took the photo on the right. When I walked along this street in 1972, I was amazed that all of the apartment buildings along the street were modernist. But in tourist areas of the city, including the apartment houses along this street, Renovations to convert the apartment houses to tourist hotels or guest houses have often used international style motifs as shown in the belief that this style attracts international tourists. Although we've seen a couple of smaller heritage public buildings demolished recently in Ho Chi Minh City, Larger public buildings are usually considered safe from redevelopment and can be made even more secure by building a contemporary addition beside them and restoring the original building. The model for this approach is the National Treasury Building, a 1925 Beaux-Arts structure on the Centerpiece Boulevard of downtown Ho Chi Minh City. In 2007, this colonial building was completely restored and a high-rise addition 
was constructed behind it that offers a fairly neutral background for the colonial building. As an aside, it is interesting that the new Vietnamese modernist addition to the National Treasury Building uses a double skin facade where there is a narrow space between the curtain wall skin and the exterior wall behind it. In this case, constructed of the standard Southeast Asian construction of brick or concrete block infill finished with plaster. If you look closely at the photograph, you can see that there are smaller windows just beyond the curtain wall and the inside exterior wall. The double skin vents the hot air accumulating behind the curtain wall or radiating from the hot glass and metal framing. Unfortunately, this public museum, constructed in 1988, was demolished in late 2021 to accommodate a larger museum. This project could probably have been accomplished with an addition and thereby saving this beautiful mid-century modernist design. We usually think the public buildings like the General Science Library are unlikely to be demolished for development unless the government comes up with a plan to build a much larger library somewhere else. There is a large piece of currently unused government land behind the library that has great value as commercial land given its location. So there have been non-governmental proposals to design an addition to the library and renovate the mid-century building for continued use. Here is a student proposal for such an addition that is highly respectful of the original modernist building. Mid-century modernist warehouses and factories probably offer the best opportunity to renovate and design new creative spaces for entertainment and tourism. But unfortunately, they are most often located adjacent to the river or along canals, which makes them very valuable for high rise, luxury, residential towers. This particular site is already designated for a gated community of high rise, luxury condo towers. Similarly, the old mass housing and markets constructed in the late 1960s are often facing intensive redevelopment pressures as shown in this photo of the Bindhoi market and housing in District 4 across the canal from downtown. The redevelopment pressures on this beautiful modernist apartment building from the early 1960s are readily apparent and this building is now vacant and about to be demolished. Unfortunately, one of the most historical and valuable collections of industrial buildings at the old French Basson shipyard in the city was recently demolished. And this golden land was handed over to the largest conglomerate company in the country for redevelopment. The developer proposed a gated community of high rise luxury housing towers that is now under construction instead of the public uses for using the historical structures that the city's approved master plan had allowed for. So the city has lost much of its colonial and mid-century modernist identity over the past 25 years. The city leaders have held up Singapore as a planning model for what they would like Ho Chi Minh City to become. I'm sure the citizens of Singapore might have stories to tell about what they have lost of the historical fabric of their city. The city planners designated around 20 large parcels downtown as golden land to be auctioned off to developers. This included very desirable pieces of land, one of which unfortunately includes the first modernist building constructed in Saigon in 1931. As required by Vietnam's land law, 
there is an approved urban master plan for all districts in the city. The master plans for District 1 and portions of Districts 3 and 4 adjacent to District 1 were prepared by Nikon Seiki of Tokyo about six years ago. If the government designates a parcel for redevelopment, then the government notifies the land rights owner and buys the rights back from the owner when the government is ready to clear the land and redevelop. However, the compensation is supposedly based upon current market values, but because the land transactions are so opaque to everyone, including the government, the compensation offered is always significantly less than the actual market value. Meanwhile, the owner is prohibited from repairing or improving the property. This is a 1962 modernist office and apartment building downtown. When a property deteriorates like this property has over the past five years, then you know it is slated for redevelopment. It could have been renovated for many more years of productive use. By the way, the photograph of the interior atrium in this building is not a mirror image. The building parcel is trapezoidal shaped and the atrium pinches out down there at the end as shown. But there have been some successes of renovation here, but they do not necessarily have the security of master plan approval. In fact, the master plan seeks redevelopment of both of these projects for new high rise buildings. In the case of the building on the left, 40 Winhui Boulevard, the legal tenants of this apartment building, constructed around 1950, have been notified that they will have to be re relocated at some time in the future, and they will be compensated then for their apartments. Under the law, the owners cannot then repair or lease or renovate their apartment units to improve their value. However, many illegal creative uses have crept into the building and illegal tenant construction have made both these buildings into attractive destinations for young people and tourists visiting the trendy cafes and retail boutiques. The cafes and shops in the Tondatam Street apartment house on the right are also illegal since it is a housing block, but that site is not as desirable yet to developers. Awareness of heritage and historical values of Vietnamese traditional, French colonial, and Vietnamese mid-century modernist structures is not high in the minds of most Vietnamese. Many consider historical buildings to be old and past their prime, and thus candidates for demolition to bring on new buildings. There is hope with the younger generation, which is beginning to realize that Vietnamese national and cultural identity and the city's identity are becoming lost through the the demolition of so many historical structures. But organizing activism in the country is currently very difficult. Facebook groups have turned out to be the most effective tool at this time to increase awareness of interested citizens, exchange information, and circulate petitions to the government. There was a recent huge success achieved as a result of a citizen petition to change the government's plans for demolition of two key historical structures. A few years ago, the People's Committee of Ho Chi Minh City, headquartered in the ornate colonial City Hall on Lei Tandon Street, decided to demolish two historical structures in back of the City Hall along Li Du Chan Street in order to build a huge new high-rise city administration center. The most historical of these two structures was the former French Secretariat building or administrative center occupied in 1881, which was considered the second most important colonial building in the Southern colony after the governor general's palace. The other historical structure at the other end of the block 
is the mid-century Vietnamese modernist. Ministry of National Defense Building for the Republic of Vietnam, occupied in 1954. The citizen petition asked the People's Committee to reconsider its plan to demolish the French colonial building, and the committee agreed to reconsider its plan. The final decisions have not been made yet. However, this was an important achievement of citizen activism, considering that it was not organized under an organization. So reuse and renovation of mid-century modernist architecture is very difficult here at this time in Vietnam. It'll be a long time until an effective heritage organization can be formed and supported, which will be helpful to assist the government to compile a list of historic structures to be protected by law. But Vietnam has a culture and economy of energy and creativity. People with a passion and vision for reuse or adaption of historical structures for new uses can rise and carry their visions forward assuming they have the ability to convince money to follow them. Thank you very much for following along with me here.